Today we're going to talk about tuberculous lymphadenitis, previously known as scrofula or king's evil in the good old days. So what is tuberculous lymphadenitis? It is one of the most common extra pulmonary manifestations of tuberculosis. It is a chronic granulomatous inflammation of the lymph node, characterized by caseation necrosis. So caseation necrosis is the histological finding in the lymph node with, tuber uh, with tuberculous lymphonitis. It is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis and other related bacteria like mycobacterium bovis. In majority cases, it is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Regarding the pathogenesis, in 80% cases, the tubercle bacilli enter the body through the tonsils and from there affect the upper deep cervical nodes of the corresponding site. In 20% cases, the posterior triangle lymph nodes are affected due to involvement of the adenoids. In majority of the affected patients, the tuberculous process is limited to the clinically affected lymph nodes. That means that the features of pulmonary tuberculosis may not be present in majority of the individuals. Regarding the clinical features, it can occur at any age, but commonly affects children and young adults. It usually presents as a slowly progressive, painless swelling of a single group of lymph nodes. The group of lymph nodes which are commonly involved in order of frequency, the most common is cervical group, then the mediastinal group, mesenteric group, the axillary group, and the inguinal group. Now, in some cases, in long-standing cases, a discharging sinus may be present over the affected area. So now we look into the different stages of TB lymphonitis. So the stage of lymphonitis is the first stage. This usually affects the upper deep anterior, anterior deep cervical nodes. In any case, irrespective of the area, the first stage is the stage of lymphonitis, where the individual nodes are having inf inflammation. The nodes are non-tender, discrete, mobile and firm. This stage is followed by the stage of periadenitis, where the nodes become matted with perilymphonitis. The nodes are still firm and non-tender. As you can see here, this here is a skin and this line represents the deep fascia and these are the deep cervical nodes in this case since we are talking about TB lymphonitis affecting the neck mainly. This is the second stage where the nodes are now joining with each other that is known as matting. Still the entire process is deep to deep fascia. In the third stage there is caseation necrosis within the lymph nodes and the caseating material breaks through the capsules of the lymph nodes to form a cold abscess deep to the deep cervical fascia. Now, this cold abscess is known as cold because all the classic signs of an abscess are absent. That means redness, tenderness, localized rise in temperature. Now, one thing that is common in both is the feature known as tumor. That means even a cold abscess will have a swelling and so will a typical abscess. But the other features, calor, dolor, and, uh, and the redness or erythema are absent or rubber are absent. So here again, you can see the picture. Skin, deep fascia, and now the nodes are slightly separated by a central collection which forms the cold abscess. Now, this is followed by the stage of collar stud abscess. The cold abscess, which is deep to the deep fascia, eventually ruptures through the deep fascia and the pus flows through a small opening into the superficial fascia to form a collar stud abscess. So now there is a collection superficial to the deep fascia as well as deep to the deep fascia. So this is how it looks like. It's got the dumbbell shape. So here in certain areas, the cross fluctuation test can be easily made out.
Now the final stage is the stage of sinus. This is usually seen in untreated cases. So the skin over the center of the cold abscess eventually will get eroded to form a discharging chronic sinus with an undermined edge and surrounding bluish color. In some cases, especially in the case of tuberculous lymphadenitis, the sinus may be multiple. So you can see here, here the cold abscess which, had, which became the cholesterol abscess, now the superficial portion directly communicates outwards. And this is how it looks like. So, the stage of lymphadenitis, stage of matting, stage of cold abscess. And in the fourth stage, it pierces the deep fascia to come superficial. And last is stage of sinus formation. It's a very simplified diagram for easy uh, drawing. So this is a tuberculous sinus, you can see it, a mild bluish tinge seen all around. So the investigations, the, if you do a complete blood count with ESR, the ESR is frequently elevated. The, the, uh, the total count may not be elevated, but the ESR will be frequently elevated. Similarly, an ultrasound or a CT scan of the neck will reveal the uh, collection and the status of the nodes in the region. An X-ray neck or an MRI cervical spine must be done to rule out tuberculosis of the spine. Now regarding the swelling, an FNAC may be done initially and if negative or if inadequate, a biopsy, an excision biopsy may be planned of the cervical lymph nodes. When taking the excision biopsy, in addition to sending a specimen for the histopathological examination, a specimen may also be sent for to a TB, PCR or gene expert for a rapid diagnosis. Now the biopsy, the histopathology will reveal casation necrosis with Langhans giant cells. Now uh, when you take the aspirate, it can be sent for uh, acid fast basale smear culture study again tb pcr or gene expert so depending on the facilities uh, the aspirate can be sent for these tests all of these will help in diagnosis of tuberculosis now in the case of a sinus the edge of the sinus will have to have taken a biopsy from there and send it for histopathological examination now, even though in majority cases there is no features of pulmonary tuberculosis, a mandu test and a chest x-ray must be done as a routine, as part of routine evaluation, and most cases it is negative. Now, regarding the treatment, briefly, once proven, then anti-tuberculosis treatment is started with isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol for the initial two months and later isoniazid, rifampicin and ethambutol is continued for a period of four months. Usually by the third month the lymph nodes will begin to reduce in size. Sometimes while starting ATT in the initial one month the size of the nodes may increase. It has been seen but after that the size will reduce and usually by the end of six months maybe 60 to 70 percent uh, disease process will be reduced. Now regarding cold abscess, a non-dependent aspiration may be done. And the reason why uh, that uh, normal aspiration cannot be done is because of the chance that the opening where you aspirate may end up as a sinus. It's because of the risk of sinus formation, non-dependent aspiration must be done for a cold abscess. Similarly, if the abscess recurs, drainage can be done by a non-dependent incision. In most case, in some cases where if the swelling persists even after medical therapy, then surgical removal of the tuberculous lymph nodes may be attempted. In the case of tuberculous sinus, the sinus tract and the sinus opening must be excised. Along with the excision of the sinus tract, the tuberculous lymph nodes must also be removed. 
So this is briefly about the treatment of tuberculous lymphadenitis or scrofula. Thank you.